love it or leave it. And we're back. Please welcome back to the stage a Saturday Night Live icon, the incredible Julia Sweeney. Hi, come around this way. Hi, thanks for being here. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. Did you know what this show was? I did a little bit. Mm. <laughs> that was very sweet of you. A lot of people just admit that they don't. No, I did a little bit. I listened to it a little bit. <laughs> today? No, not today. Before today. Before today. That's right. So I, I, I was excited to have you on, and one of the reasons I was excited to have you on is mm -hmm. we're in the middle of this like cultural moment where we're where a lot of people a lot of people are fighting uh, a shifting uh, appreciation of gender, but also a lot of people are for the first time exploring uh, being non-binary. And you played a famous. Uh, I don't know that we would describe it at the time that way or even now, but what seems to me a yeah. famous non-binary we'll character, yes. Pat. Yes. Everybody remember Pat? And I am almost 28 years old, so I, of course, remember it. <laughs> but do the children know about Pat? No, they do not. <laughs> it's, do you think that, that uh, Pat was sort of a response to a lot of the kind of gender fluidity of the 80s? Like... I was thinking about the sketches where like Chandler's on Friends and he's like, the, the joke up for Chandler was always people thinking he was gay or being just worried about gay panic all the time. Do you think it was in some ways a response to like yes, some of the stuff? Yes, it was that definitely that way, yeah. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> um, no. Um, <laughs> well, my original idea for it, I don't think really came across <laughs> exactly the way I wanted it to because once you create a character, it sort of has a life of its own. But my original idea was like watching Madonna and Katie Lang and Prince all kind of play with more gender bendy looks and things like that. And I thought, but the real non, well, I didn't even think non-binary. I didn't think about that at all. I just thought the real androgynous people are people who don't even realize they're androgynous. They're just like the harried mother somewhere or father and they might they're not intentionally being um androgynous but you can't tell what they are so i had been at like a pharmacy and the pharmacist was filling my prescription and for a long time i was thinking i don't know if that's a man or a woman but i know that it's not intentional it wasn't like intentionally androgynous so i thought that was funny like i always wanted to do i just thought it's funny that somebody who doesn't realize that they aren't presenting themselves as either a man or woman. Like, I always wanted to do a sketch where Pat was, like, homophobic or, like, horrified <laughs> by non-binary people, but you still didn't know if Pat was a man or a woman. So, <laughs> that would have been awesome. That really, that really, no, that really freaked out the squares. I know. <laughs> no, exactly. But then people took it in a different way. Anyway. So, Abby McEnany, <laughs> uh, friend of the show, confronted you on her show, Work in yes. Progress, about the impact Pat had on her life. Yes. Is Abby the most bizarre person you've ever met? Because for me, <laughs> top five, for sure. Oh, no, that's not true at all. I would not say that. But maybe top 15. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cool list. Have you met any uh, like younger and non-binary fans who now like love Pat, who, who talk about Pat? Um, yeah, I, in fact, I, just before I came here, I actually look, I think I might be being punked on some documentary. There was a young person who loved Pat, was non-binary, and she wanted to interview me. And then she said, do you know there's a club in Brooklyn that still has once a month you dress up as Pat and go to this club in Brooklyn? I was like, that can't possibly be true. And she said yes. And then we, I talked to her on camera and actually when she left after interviewing me my husband said do you know how many things you said that taken out of context could like ruin your life <laughs> <laughs> and I thought oh and then I forgot all about it and then on the way here I was googling Pat rave you know thing in Brooklyn I couldn't find anything I think it doesn't really exist or maybe that's what they want you to think yes I don't know it exists, it exists. Caroline says it, it exists. It does, but I couldn't find it. Like, it's real. It's it's real. The the that it's Pat is like Rave is my, real. I say, move on, people. <laughs> this is old. That is the '90s. Okay. 
I think you need to go to that party. It's going to oh, go and okay. just start yelling no, at people. No, here's what we do. No, here's what we do. You get in the full Pat getup. And you're just one of any Pat walking in. Oh. And then at some point, people oh. slowly start to realize, wait no, a second. No, no. Or they never More know. More fun, they, they never, never know. know. They never know. They yes. never know you were there. In fact, maybe this is something you're putting on because you go every Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> You've been going every Saturday. You get in full Pat regalia and you go to this event and now you're, 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 you're playing like you don't know about it. I like that idea. Let's do it. Or, yes. Okay. <laughs> now, at the end of one of the final It's Pat sketches, the one yes. where you smooch Harvey Keitel on yes. a desert island, Adam Sandler stands up in the crowd and refuses to allow Pat to reveal their gender, saying it would ruin the fun. Do you think we can hire Adam Sandler to follow non-binary people around and shout at people <laughs> who misgender them? No, I don't think you can. You can't get him? No. No, that's too bad. Now, again, <laughs> as a 24-year-old, I certainly remember all 14 appearances by Pat <laughs> on Saturday Night Live, but do you? Were there 14? Apparently. Oh, if this card is correct. No, I don't remember them all. Uh, so now it is time for a game that we're calling. Oh, no. It's Pat, the non-binary icon. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> or right. it's Pat or is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need you to dig back into the annals of late night history and answer true or false. Is this an actual way Pat's friends and coworkers try to gently inquire about their gender? Or is it one we made up? Oh, oh, dear. Julie, this are you ready? This is not going to be good for me. <laughs> <laughs> Did Pat's friends, coworkers, and a random stranger's try finding out if Pat had a purse or a wallet? I, yes. True. Yes. However, do you remember what Pat had instead? Um, no. It was a fanny pack. Oh, fanny pack, that's right. No, I do remember that. Uh, did Pat's friend offer Pat a tampon only for Pat to reply, no, thank you, I don't smoke? <laughs> No, we made that one up. Uh, no, we, she got, that's a good go. one, though. Yeah. Asking if Pat would prefer to buy men's or women's razors, only for Pat to shrug and pick whichever is cheaper. Oh yes, I think that is one. Is it? It no. is. Okay, good. And and frugal. And frugal, Pat was Pat's frugal. Okay. Well, it's interesting as you go through these because one thing that I was <laughs> struck by in like looking at all this Pat content is. <laughs> Pat is blissfully unaware of all these gender tropes yes! that are being assigned to them. I know. And there's something about Pat's happiness yes. that seems important. Yeah, I agree. But it is interesting <laughs> that the sketch's perspective is one of everyone believing so certain with sh that there is an answer. That there had yes, at the time. That there has to be an answer. And that I know. was the that the idea of there being someone that who was non-binary just wasn't something that people thought of, or at least people but that, that, yeah. that people that weren't non-binary could have thought of at the time. Yeah. I mean, we, well, uh, Christine Zander, who I wrote all the sketches with at SNL, we decided right away at the beginning, the jokes were not going to be, the joke was going to be how uncomfortable Pat made everyone around them because people were obsessed with coming up with the gender for somebody. That's where the comedy was. It wasn't on laughing at Pat. Yeah, it is, inter it but is interesting. But then later people accused me of, presenting a non-binary person in a negative way right right that's but it. really i thought of pat as i think pat is a happy go lucky person who is either a man or a woman we just don't know which it is and who cares yeah. that's what that was the original idea yeah it is it is it is it is when you step back, like I see that first step, but you take yeah. one further step, and it really is about an obsession with gender that yes. clearly still exists. Yes. Because that is what we were dealing with right now. People who are desperate for it to be a simple answer and right. looking to find it. Well, I learned, like, I started doing these, like, I would get hired to do appearances as Pat. And that was ended up being a fun and and lucrative thing at the time to do. Hell yeah! But then there was this uh, mall, and I did some mall openings, and it was always fun. Like I did, I did crazy things. Okay, and then there were these mall openings in the Midwest. Who? Well, the first one, I think it was in Ohio, where they were like, "No, we can't have Pat because Pat is upsetting." They said, "No, you can't have Pat be there," and that was the first time I realized that it was making people upset in real life that they couldn't tell if Pat was a, a man or woman. I had no idea. And then that, so it's, it's a weird thing how we're like the, you might say ultra woke uh, 
non-binary people who are don't like Pat are in the same camp as the people, you know, at an Ohio mall who don't want Pat. It, it's a very weird mixture of liking and not liking a Pat, <laughs> I will say. Pat was offered Sports Illustrator Glamour. Uh, oh, I don't remember that. Uh, but Pat cleverly replied, what about people? Oh, yeah, we did do that. Hell yeah, you got it. <laughs> uh, Wondering if Pat would use a men's or women's bicycle only for Pat to fly by on a Segway. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. <laughs> Selling condoms to Pat. Um, was that in the movie? No. Can't remember. It was. <laughs> and Pat declared contraception is the responsibility of both oh, partners. Oh, that's right. I wrote that joke. <laughs> oh, God. You said, when you get old and forget things, you can enjoy things all over again. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the end of the joke? No. I'm a very sexual being. Yes, I'm a very sexual being. <laughs> I like that. I know. I like that. Uh, and finally, driving Christopher Walken to the brink of madness with the mystery <laughs> of Pat's gender identity compelling him to leap from a window to his demise. Oh. Did that happen? Yes. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> People really were Aww, driven really ahead, of, really ahead of its time. Yes. People being driven absolutely bananas by the prospect <laughs> right. of not knowing someone's gender. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's cool. Yeah. It's great to have you here. Oh, thank you. I'm such a fan of yours. I was just saying, oh, I was just thinking my favorite Pat joke is when Pat, <laughs> I'm just going to, this is the one so, I do remember, I is when it. Pat comes up and says, I need to buy some feminine napkins. <laughs> First of all, just the term feminine napkins. Okay. Always funny. That made me laugh. And then uh, the person at the drugstore goes, well, oh. And then Pat says, I always enjoy when my aunt comes over to get have some beautiful flowered napkins. <laughs> and then Pat goes, oh, that made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> the 90s. The 90s. Julia Sweeney. Check out her Substack, and her one-person show will be dropping there soon. When we come back, it's time for the rant wheel. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Julia's going to stick around for it. Yes.